serum gonadotropin levels. In constitutional delin growth, it will be normal. Family short stature, it will be normal. It will be low in congenital hypopituitarism except isolated growth hormone deficiency where the gonadotropins are not affected. Hello everyone, welcome to the treasure review and here we will be reviewing another important treasure which has been given to you as a part of your SS pediatric package that is short stature in children. So what is the differential diagnosis? What are the common points about each cause that you should know? So we will be looking at the table. Uh, I am not using my own handwriting because a visual association is also important and so you can see, you can open the treasure and you can find that we are basically distinguishing five causes of short stature in children. So you have constitutional delay in growth in puberty also called as simply constitutional delay. We have familial short stature. Both of them are included in physiological type of short stature. Then we have the pathological varieties like congenital hypopituitarism, hypothyroidism and also a syndromic cause that is Turner's syndrome. So first of all, family history. Now, often textbooks would say that there is no family history in uh, familial short stature, but you need to understand what family history is being talked about. In constitutional delay in growth, there will be a family history of delayed puberty. The father, mother uh, will also give the history that the child had uh, uh, puberty somewhere around 15, 16 years onset and even I also had at that time. That is how the parents will also give the history. In familial short stature, the short stature is running in the family, so there is a family history of short stature, but there is no delayed puberty family history, right? So be careful what family history is being talked about. In congenital hypopituitarism, hypothyroidism and Turner syndrome, there will not be any positive family history. Then birth height and weight, uh, it will be normal. Constitutional delay growth babies, they have a normal birth weight, they have a normal birth length. Whereas familial short stature, they are short and lighter in size, they remain short and light, majorly short and they die short. This is the, the typical way they are told. They are always below the third centile. Whereas constitutional delay in growth, there is a delayed uh, growth velocity which leads to these children developing short stature in the post-infancy stage, right? Congenital hypopituitarism and hypothyroidism will have a normal birth height and weight. Whereas Turner syndrome, often children are found to have a low birth weight. Then uh, rate of growth will be slow from infancy. Till infancy, these children grow normally. Then there is a delayed gap, at least in the first few years after infancy. And then familiar short stature will have a normal growth velocity. But the because their starting point is low, so they will always be below the third centile curve. Congenital hypopituitarism is slow from few months after birth. Hypothyroidism will be slow from birth. And Turner syndrome again will be slow from birth. Then we have bone age, it will be less than chronological age. Bone age is very frequently asked in exam. It is less than chronological age for constitutional delay in growth. It means that bones still have growth potential and these children tend to show late catch up growth. On the other hand, because bones are corresponding to the chronological age in family short stature, they are found to be normal. So the gr growth plate fusion tends to happen earlier compared to constitutional delay. Congenital hypopituitarism, again, bone uh, age is less than chronological age. Same for hypothyroidism, whereas Turner syndrome, it is variable. It varies from child to child. Then puberty, as I told you, it will be delayed in constitutional delay in growth. It will be normal in family short stature and delayed in all the three other varieties. Then growth hormone will be normal here. It will be normal in family short stature, but it will be low in congenital hypopituitarism because growth hormone is being produced from pituitary and variable levels can be found in Turner syndrome. And lastly, gonadotropin levels, serum gonadotropin levels. In constitutional delay in growth, it will be normal. Family short stature it will be normal. It will be low in congenital hypopituitarism except isolated growth hormone deficiency where the gonadotropins are not affected. It will be variable or non-specific or sometimes mostly normal in hypothyroidism. Turner syndrome which will be high, it is a useful distinguishing point because Turner syndrome, you will have streak gonads, you have a primary gonadal failure and so the feedback inhibition to the pituitary and hypothalamus is not there and that is why because of loss of feedback inhibition, they will have a high serum gonadotropin levels, right? So this serum gonadotropin level can be used to distinguish this and this variety. I hope the treasure you have revised well. Keep learning. Thank you very much. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.